APRC is a state-of-the-art testing and research facility and what makes us unique is our focus on aromatic plants and the essential oils that these plants produce. I would venture to say that a majority of people 10 years ago uh, wouldn't know what you're talking about in a household if you said an essential oil. The public is far more educated and understanding now of what is that difference and what an essential oil is and what they want to use uh, for them personally or for their families. What we specialize in is being able to take very small biomarkers and synthetic markers and doing chemometrics and understanding what should and should not be present in essential oil at a very uh, microscopic or a parts per million, even parts per billion level and uh, take that information and be able to look back and see what's really happened with this oil and if it's truly pure uh, and distilled and untouched or if it's been built or played with or manipulated in some way. Our bread and butter and our first analysis would be with our specialized GCMS testing and we have built our own library based around being able to identify and ensure purity in essential oils. For every test we do, we look at at least a thousand components. And a lot of times it can be much more than that because, again, the, the true story of essential oil testing is in the, the minor details and uh, what happens that uh, behind the scenes, if you will, that a lot of laboratories um, aren't familiar with or just don't know what they're looking for or have the sophistication or the experience to be able to understand what that those little details are telling them. There's a lot of weight held on, on every element every step of the supply chain. So at APRC we are dedicated to helping businesses sustain uh, sustainable business practices and that means working with the farmers, the growers, distillers and the end users to understand what decisions they make and how that impacts all the other steps in the supply chain. We can also do a lot of in-depth uh, in the field research too, where we'll gather raw samples, work with the producers themselves, and be able to understand what does the true untouched pure oil look like, and even help to ensure the sustainability side of what's being done and uh, improve practices to whether it's improving yields, ensure consistent quality, and just maintain a, a high standard of, of practice within the, the distillation process itself. I really believe we're still just scratching the surface on what Mother Nature can produce for us, and what's available on uh, this wonderful planet we have, and the ways that we can uh, sustainably produce and better the lives of everyone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, CEO of APRC, Aaron Sorensen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Greg, for the introduction as well. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning, and we at APRC are honored to be invited by doTERRA to this international convention and to be here with so many essential oil enthusiasts. Uh, my name is Aaron Sorensen. I'm the CEO and owner of the Aromatic Plant Research Center, often simply referred to as APRC. Now, APRC is a newer company, but the members of our team are the best in the industry. And we have well over a century of combined experience between our executive board. Now, APRC, as Greg said, is an independent third-party testing and research entity specifically focused on aromatic plants and the essential oils these amazing plants produce. We offer our clients a wide variety of testing and research options and education in the fields that we have, and we have multiple locations globally. We are honored to have doTERRA as one of our major clients and to have the privilege of working closely with them and their efforts to provide the purest, most potent, and highest quality essential oils to all of you. <clears throat> now, I do want to take a little moment and expand on Dave's introduction of our executive board yesterday and talk about our backgrounds and our relative experiences. Uh, as for myself, I grew up here in Utah. And I have a quality background. In, I have a background in quality assurance, research and development, formulations in the food, dental, cosmetic, and dietary supplement industries. I have four wonderful children, 
And my beautiful wife, Savannah, and I will be married for 12 years at the end of this month. <laughs> I, I am currently studying also, or I have been working in the essential industry for about uh, the last decade or so, but specifically focused on essential oil production research and uh, what, everything that goes into making an essential oil for the last six years. I'm also, I am also studying for a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Miami. Now, Dr. Pravod Satyal is the chief scientific officer and also an owner, my partner, and he's originally from Nepal, where he was a professor and mentor before coming to the United States to earn his PhD in chemistry. But not just in chemistry, he specifically earned it in essential oil analysis and adulteration detection. You'll get a chance to hear from him here a little bit later. Now, Dr. Brian Lawrence is originally from England and is considered by those in the industry the most well-known and respected essential oil scientist in the world. Brian is very passionate about all aspects of essential oils and helped pioneer the use of gas chromatography for testing of essential oils. He is as entertaining as he is intelligent, which you were able to experience last year if you were here with us. And now, Unfortunately, Dr. Lawrence wasn't able to be here with us this year, but he'd asked me to send his regards to each of you and the doTERRA owners. Dr. Nora Desoki is originally from Egypt and is the newest member of our APRC board. She received her PhD in biotechnology sciences and engineering and has worked in several natural product and drug discovery groups. She's been impactful in APRC's research and review art in re reviewing articles to our own internal research on essential oils. You'll also get a chance to hear from her in just a little bit. Dr. William Setzer is a native of California and currently an emeritus professor from the University of Alabama, Huntsville, where he's taught chemistry for more than 30 years. Dr. Setzer is the backbone of APRC's publications and has authored or co-authored nearly 500 peer-reviewed scientific papers. Dr. Setzer has always had an interest in aromatic plants and novel drug discovery, and this interest has taken him all over the world, studying a wide variety of natural products, including working in the cloud forests of Costa Rica for more than 25 years. He's here with us today. You can come meet him at our APCR booth, APRC booth. Dr. Anjanette DiCarlo is originally from New York and received her PhD in natural resources and environmental science. She oversees APRC's uh, sustainability efforts on various aromatic plants throughout the world, and you may be most familiar with her work in Somaliland with the native frankincense trees. She is also a member of several other conservative conservation foundations, and her work has been highlighted on CNN's Inside Africa. You'll get a chance to hear from her tomorrow morning. Now, I do want to take a little moment and expand on APRC's mission, the objectives of the company, and the four pillars on which we stand, namely testing, sustainability, research, and education in aromatic plants and essential oils. Testing and analysis of essential oils is a field in which we specialize. Using the latest equipment and unique methods, we can do what no other lab has the ability to do when it comes to adulteration detection. I'll expand on that in just a moment as well. Now, sustainability and research on, aromat on aromatic plants is vital to providing the highest quality essential oil and ensuring a consistent supply, not only for the present, but for years to come. We work with many farmers and distillers around the world, evaluating their processes and providing improvements from both an economic and an environmental perspective. Research on can encompass many elements, including review of papers, publications, in-house experiments, and testing done internally. Now, APRC board members have published around 700 peer-reviewed papers, and we are continuing our research and publications, making them available to the public. The final objective or pillar is education, teaching everyone who would like to learn and know more about this fascinating world of aromatic plants and essential oils. We welcome the opportunity to teach and share what we have learned. More than half of APRC's board is taught at a collegiate level, and we truly enjoy knowledge sharing. Now, as a research-based entity, Aromatic Plant Research Center initiates and participates in diverse research projects in a variety of ways. We gather information from journals as well as doing a great deal of field data and sample gathering all around the world. 
Of course, there is consistent testing in our lab as well as new and interesting samples. Uh, we also collaborate with other labs, universities, and research entities as often as possible. Now, one of the key drivers in our research and member of the APRC board is Dr. Nora Dasoki. As I mentioned earlier, Dr. Dasoki has worked in several natural product and drug discovery groups, including her work at Vanderbilt University, doing research for the effects of natural products. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Nora Dasoki to the stage. Thanks so much, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, thank you for joining me here today, Nora. Now, you've been doing a good amount of research on aromatic plasmas and essential oils. Will you share with everyone what you found? Sure. Uh, so we all know that aromatic plants have been used in traditional medicine for thousands of years in many forms, from the fresh plants as secretions, extracts, to oils. Experimental evidence has shown a remarkable potential for essential oils, which confirms their traditional use. And here are some examples. For frankincense and sandalwood are effective in maintaining healthy cells. Grapefruit, lime, and yuzu oils are helpful with weight management. They're great as a natural weight loss aid. Clinical trials have shown that neroli, peppermint, basil are helpful in cases of pain and discomfort management. Neroli and lavender oils are used for their soothing, calming, and relaxing effects in many healthcare centers around Europe and Central America. These oils actually decrease the mean and anxiety scores, improve the mood, and create a sense of well-being. Turmeric and yuzu oils are helpful in maintaining glucose levels around their normal range. For menopause, clinical studies have shown that neroli odor was effective in relieving the symptoms, reducing the mean anxiety scores, improving the mood, maintaining the blood pressure around the normal levels, and increasing the romantic feelings. <laughs> they like that one. For aging, sandalwood, clary sage, and lemon oils are excellent anti-aging agents. Actually, sandalwood is a skin moisturizer. It soothes, calms, and hydrates the skin. It reduces the fine wrinkles, uh, fine lines and wrinkles. Lemon oil is an excellent skin penetration enhancer, especially when applied with vitamins. Finally, from memory, neroli, lime, sandalwood, and agarwood are excellent memory and learning enhancers. Wow. You know, there really is a great deal of information and positive results with essential oils and their potential to help a variety of elements. Now, I know you, also, you have also recently published a paper on turmeric essential oil. Tell us about your findings, Mara. That is true. So since turmeric oil was launched yesterday, I would like to highlight our latest publication on the composition and biological activity of curcuma oils, including turmeric oil. Uh, it was published this month in Nutrients. It has more than 300 references. Most of the studies have found a great potential for turmeric oil. The oil actually can maintain healthy blood glucose and cholesterol levels. It maintains healthy blood vessels, which improves the overall circulation. It helps with weight management and weight loss. It's a remarkable antioxidant, which promotes the antioxidant enzymes and molecules that protect from the harmful radicals, which is the mechanism behind it being a great neuroprotective. It also supports healthy nervous system function. It improves the mood. It promotes feelings of positivity. It reduces stress because of its soothing, calming, and relaxing effects. It also maintains a healthy inflammatory response of the body. It's excellent for joint comfort and function. It maintains healthy liver and GI tract functions. And it supports healthy and clean-looking mouth. I can go on and on on this, but because of the time, 
You can read our full text on our website or the MDBI website. It's open access, free of charge. Wonderful. <laughs> Bottom line, it does a lot. There's a lot of research on it. And it never ceases to amaze me how much potential and more there is to learn about oils like turmeric oil. Now, Nora, with all the positive effects of essential oils, are there also cautions or, con or things to be mindful of? Actually, essential oils are generally safe. Many of them have uh, generally recognized as safe or grass status. But still, there's, uh, they're a powerful form of plant-based solution. So use it responsibly. Be careful. Read and educate yourself before using the oil. Uh, follow all the label and instructions. And if in doubt, use frankincense. It's my favorite, too. <laughs> The primary issue with essential oils is skin sensitivity, either by irritation or photosensitivity. I'll give you an example. With some citrus oils, especially with bergamot oil that's expressed, and I'm talking about the neat expressed bergamot oil, it can carry some risk of irritation and skin photosensitivity. So make sure or it is recommended to dilute the oil before you use it and avoid exposure to direct light for at least 12 hours. Also, avoid contact to your eyes, ears, nose, and other sensitive areas. Um, in case of children and elderly people, some oils need to be diluted further to be safe for children or elderly. Uh, also, don't assume that all the oils that are safe for you are safe for your bed, but whenever you're in doubt, frankincense. <laughs> Also, in case of pregnancy and breastfeeding, consult your doctor or your healthcare provider before use because some oils can dramatically affect your hormonal levels. And also, some oils can interfere with angiogenesis. And last point in safety avoid using old or oxidized oils because it, it increases the risks. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much, Nora. Uh, with APRC's specialized ability to detect contamination and adulteration in essential oils, and doTERRA's focus on only selling pure and natural essential oils, what are some of the concerns if someone ends up using an unpure oil? Well, quality and purity of the oil is a main issue for anyone using the oil as a therapeutic agent. Confidence in a safe use starts with having an oil from a known origin and a known composition. The good thing about the terror is that they have 100% pure, or they have committed to having 100% pure oil from a known source, known natural source with published composition. Another good thing about the terror oils is that they're, like, uh, they're not contaminated with other plants or pesticides, and they are not adulterated. So you're starting with 100% pure oil, and you know they're starting from 100%, you can control your dosage after that. Great. Thanks so much, Nora. It's been a pleasure to have you here today, and great to have everyone here get a chance to get to know you a little bit. I appreciate all the research you're doing at APRC. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thanks to all. So I mentioned testing just a moment earlier, and I do want to expand on that. Now, there are a lot of different means and methods to test essential oils. Each of them have their strengths and limitations. Some of the most commonly used testing methods are known as physical constants, which most often involves a series of tests such as refractive index, optical rotation, and specific gravity. Then there's probably the most well-known testing method for essential oils today, gas chromatography mass spectroscopy, or GCMS. Different types of gas chromatography include chiral GCMS and FID, and then there's also liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy, or LCMS along with many other less, more or less sophisticated means of testing oil. Now, the big question is, what does all this mean and how does it relate to you and the quality of oils that you use? Well, when it comes to essential oil quality, it's fair to say not all options for oils are alike, and the quality of oil available from different companies can vary greatly. Uh, you may have heard that more than 80% of all essential oils on the market today are contaminated or adulterated in some way. But Greg touched on this a little bit. I want to expand uh, a little bit more. What is contamination and adulteration really, and what's the difference between the two? So, well, and these are my definitions, but simply put, contamination is the unintentional 
addition of chemicals or pollutants, while adulteration is the intentional addition of chemicals or other oils or carrier oils. Contamination typically does not have any economic motivation, while adulteration is done specifically to increase profits. Now, uh, I recently was working with a group of Roman chamomile farmers and helping them in their production. And during this process, I had warned them many times to use glass or stainless steel containers when collecting the oil, as many of them were using old plastic water bottles, uh, as you can see in this picture here. When harvest season came, many distillers did not heed that warning and used the more convenient path plastic bottles. More than half of the producers that season on these farms had con was contaminated with phthalates, or plastic uh, contamination that APRC detected and hence had to reject. Now, the good news in this story is they did learn a valuable lesson, and all of them are now using the proper containers to collect their oil, and since then, we have not had a rejection from these farms. So, on to adulteration, which is done in many, many ways. It can be as simple as adding a very cheap vegetable oil to an oil or a very sophisticated addition of isolated compounds that may even be from natural resources to extend an oil. Adulteration happens at the farm level, the brokers, resellers, end distributor, and all with the intent to increase profits. Now, I, I really don't have enough time today to go into all the ways that adulteration takes place, but I do want you to remember it is common practice in the industry to extend, standardize, enhance, and even fully create uh, to be able to pad a profit margin for each of these steps in the essential supply chain. Now, APRC uses a, a, a many different means of testing an oil for contamination and adulteration. Testing an oil's physical, physical constants, as I alluded to, is one of the most common and easy ways to see if it's consistent with an established standard for the oil in question. For instance, the optical rotation of an oil is taken by shooting a beam of polarized light through a sample and measuring how much that light, that, that light rotates as it goes through the sample. Refractive index is a similar concept, and it's a measurement of how much the beam of light is bent or refracted as it goes through the substance, in this case, in essential oil. Specific gravity is a ratio of the density of a sample, again, an essential oil, to the density of a reference sample, which is typically most often water. Now, you can see the names of these testings are descriptive for what's trying to be accomplished. Sometimes we scientists do name things in an understandable, logical way. Not always, though. Each of these tests gives an indication of how similar the sample is to an established sample, and when combined, and if they are all within the expected ranges, it is a good indication that the sample is what it's supposed to be. Now, APRC has a state-of-the-art, fully automated system to perform all of these tests. However, this testing does have a lot of limitations because of very sophisticated alteration designed specifically to be able to pass these tests. So that's why multiple tests are needed to establish multiple layers of information and data points to paint a bigger picture of essential oil quality. <clears throat> now, another layer as we establish this tapestry of essential oil purity is LCMS, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. LCMS is a technique used to separate and identify compounds in a liquid phase meaning that the sample is not heated or volatilized and it stays in its liquid form all the way through the testing. Now, LCMS is a useful tool in identifying heavier or larger components that typically are not able to be identified or is an ideal for GCMS testing. LC is helpful in testing plant extracts, CO2s, absolutes, and concretes, along with a variety of carrier oils. LCMS is also very impactful in detecting an identification of pesticides. Now, when we, use when we use LCMS for adulteration, it gives a greater ability to see simple, unsophisticated adulteration, such as simply adding a carrier oil to an essential oil to try and extend it. Okay, so on to, on to the big gun here. I do want to talk about the bread and butter of essential oil testing, GCMS, Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. Now, I guess many people in this room have heard of using GCMS in testing essential oils. 
And I want to take a moment and talk about what it is and why it is so important in the purity of essential oil testing. GCMS is a similar concept to LCMS, but the difference is the sample is heated until it volatilizes or becomes a gas. Now, there are two basic portions to GCMS. The first is gas chromatography, and this is a method of separating chemical compounds in a sample by steadily heating the sample and pushing it through a column, which is a small tube, and it's pushed using an inert gas. The smaller and lighter molecules in the sample move the quickest through this column, while the heavier, larger components move slower. This allows the components of the sample to separate, as illustrated in this slide you can see here. Uh, using the time it took the compounds to travel through the column, you can identify what the compound is. Now, not only can you identify the compounds, but using the intensity of the peaks they produce, you can also determine how much of that compound is in the sample, too. So, the second part of GCMS is the mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer is a type of detector that when the compound passes through, the, the, hits, uh, that it, the compounds hit as it passes through the GC portion of the GCMS. Now, this mass spectrometer ionizes and separates the compounds, sorting them, sorting the ions based on their mass. This then tells you the mass of every component, giving further clarity and precision with, with, when identifying compounds in a sample. So, that's a brief overview of GCMS. So, why is it so important in contamination and adulteration detection in essential oils? Well, it gives an experienced chemist the data and information needed to, to literally see thousands of individual components in every sample of, of essential oils, even the extremely minor ones. Now, this graph you can see here is called a chromatogram, and it is the GCMS's interpretation of the sample. The higher the peak or the larger the area, the more of that component is present in the sample. Using the retention time of, of, and the mass of the components it can be identified with a very high level of confidence about what it is. For an experienced chemist who knows what the chemical compounds should and should not be present in the oil you're looking at, it is very telling to look at these minor components uh, and found using GCMS techniques. Now, this chromatogram is actually for neroli oil, and all the major peaks look expected and normal, as, you would, as you'd likely see. But this very tiny peak here shouldn't be there in pure neroli. It is a synthetic marker and it, or an indicator that, that linalool has been added. Now, just about any lab can run a GCMS and correctly identify the major components, but the major components often don't tell the full story of adulteration and contamination. It does take a great deal of expertise to know what you're, to look for to be able to see if an essential oil has been adulterated using very sophisticated methods. Now, on this next slide here, uh, those of you who saw the chromatogram, you're, uh, you probably are familiar with those because of uh, a wonderful resource that doTERRA offers known as source to you Now, how many of you here are using source to you Great. This is a, a wonderful resource. Uh, and it's easy to find. You just go to source to youcom and you'll be taken to the landing page like this. There's a lot of wonderful information on growers, distillers, sourcing and testing, and the scientists behind there. APRC is honored to be a part of source to you by providing our third-party independent results for every single lot of oil doTERRA cells. Yeah. So... All you need to do is input the lot number on the bottom of your single oil into the section here called Quality Reports, and you'll be taken to the information page uh, on that specific lot of oil. Now, this, this information here is on a lot of sandalwood that I purchased from doTERRA. There's a lot of great information on this oil, and if you click on the PDF labeled Test Results, you'll be taken to APRC's GCMS result for this oil. Here you can read about the methods APRC used to test it, and you can also see the chromatogram from the GCMS, and there's also in the interpretation of the analysis, naming the com chemical components found in this oil. Now, there are very few companies that are willing to make independent results of their oils available, and doTERRA is the only one of APRC's clients who have made our results public to you.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite a master of GCMS analysis on the stage here, Dr. Prabodh Satyal. Now, Dr. Satyal has developed more than 50 proprietary libraries of individual essential oils, which is probably the largest, largest essential oil library collection in the world. He's published more than 100 research articles and, and journal in various journals and has spoken in more than a dozen international conferences. Now, Prabodh, tell us what sets APR, APRC apart from other laboratories. Very good question. As you already know, APRC is primarily focused on adulteration detection one of our customer sent a lavender sample, same sa lavender sample to three different labs of essential oils, including APRC lab. The other labs did not have expertise on detecting sophisticated level of adulteration, and they missed adulteration. As part of confidentiality, I'm not exposing them. As you see in the screen, lab A said pure, lab B also said pure to the same sample. It doesn't mean those labs were bad, but they did not have advanced adulteration detection technique as we have. But when that same sample came to APRC lab, it was detected as sophisticatedly adulterated lavender by lavendin. You can see the highlighted components and their percentages, which clearly indicates it has been mixed with lavendin cheaper type of lavendula species. As for your information, these types of adulteration are very common in the market. Thank you, Dr. Satyal. Now, the difference really is in the chemist expertise and understanding versus the equipment used. So uh, what are some of the ways the general essential user can use a GCMS report, such as those found on source to you? Well, so far, I have analyzed more than 15,000 different essential oil profiles and studied several essential oil chemical profiles throughout my career. I decided to consolidate all these into one database and created a database of essential oils. Now, on my database, I have collected about 5,000 different profiles of essential oils. It will be continuously expanded. This could be a great help in several ways, such as authenticating essential oils, profile product formulation, research, and in, and in APRC database, you can search essential oil profile by botanical name, common name, compounds, molecular weight, molecular formula, and then you'll see the complete profile with complete citation. Hence, I'm expecting it would be a great tool for wellness advocates like you for research purpose. The first page of database looks like this. It has distillation information as well as plant parts used in distillation. Now this database is available by my personal website. Uh, we are working on bringing the final version in the APRC website. And if you select the oil, you will see the second page, uh, and, and you'll see the publications, uh, journal of publications, and you'll see choose your subject of interest. And if you click on that, it will lead to the complete chemical breakdown with complete citations, compound name, all the information like retention index, molecular formula, molecular weight, and area percentage. This is a great way to learn about compounds found in natural essential oils. We are also incorporating several commercial high quality essential oils like doTERRA oils in our database. So keep an eye on this. Wonderful. Thank you, Prabhu. This, so this database is an amazing tool and gives everyone the ability to look up and learn more about their oils and the chemical components which make up an oil. Now, you can come see uh, this database at our booth and we can show you how to get to it and, and help you utilize it a little bit starting today. 
Uh, now, Dr. Satyal, what advice would you give someone who wants a more in-depth education about essential oils? The primary purpose of our research is to educate people. So we continuously organize classes, seminars, globally. I recently trained about 12 different chemists over the last six months in the advanced adulteration detection. Likewise, for basic courses, our team offers short course of two days to 10 weeks classes as well. You can see on the screen what we normally offer for two days class. If you are interested, you may contact us for detail of this class. Great. Now, as one of the pillars of APRC, we are always interested in teaching and sharing the information we learn in our research and throughout our careers. This is another opportunity to continue people's education. Now, Dr. Satyal, why do you like working with doTERRA and what's been your experience with them as one of APRC's clients? Very good question. Sometimes adulterations happens on a broad level. In these cases, it would be difficult to get pure oils anywhere in the world. About two or three years back, doTERRA was running low on bergamot, and they were not getting 100% pure and natural bergamot sample. One sample was close to 95% pure, and even it was very hard to detect the adulteration by ordinary testings. And, and at the time, I consulted with Corey Linde. He said he would not accept any level of adulteration. Rather, he would stop selling that oil. And for your information, doTERRA is the only one company who sells 100% pure and natural oils. So you should be proud of this. He was much more focused on quality and integrity rather than supplies and maintenance. I am really impressed by this policy and really enjoy working with an ethical company, doTERRA. And you should, all, you should also proud for this. You have 100% pure and natural essential oil, said by Prabodh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Yes, Thanks so much, so Prabodh. doTERRA is genuinely committed to the highest quality and purity essential oils. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, sir. <laughs>
As I mentioned, it is also tested by doTERRA's internal quality control department, which I should say, and I'd be remiss if I didn't comment on how capable of a team they have, led, led by Dr. Cody Beaumont. They have an impressive team with a state-of-the-art lab. Now, upon completing APRC's testing, a second final result is provided to doTERRA by APRC and the quality and purity of this lot of oil. And what our intent at this time is to ensure it is identical to the pre-shipment sample that was approved prior to the oil ever leaving the country of origin. Now, uh, this is also the result that is uploaded to source to you. So that second lot of what, uh, second result of the lot that arrived at doTERRA is what you see on source to you. So following this sample protocol, every lot of doTERRA oil is tested by APRC at least twice. Lots are also tested by other third-party labs, doTERRA's internal QC, as I mentioned, and in most cases, it's tested by the producers themselves. I can with confidence say doTERRA is genuinely committed to ensuring the purity of their essential oils they provide to you, and they show that commitment by being at source with their oils and being the most tested oils in the world. Now, I want to thank you uh, for your kindness and being here with you today. It really has been a pleasure to spend this morning with you. And I want to invite each one of you to connect with APRC and continue learning with us as we do research on these amazing aromatic plants and the essential oils they produce. Please follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and the blog on our website as also upcoming webinars that we have. Our website is at aromaticplant.org. And there's a lot of great information about us and the research that we're doing. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day here and your time here with doTERRA. Thank you so much.